Hey, welcome back. So today I'm going to be painting on the iPad. There are certain advantages to the iPad over the computer. One, the app that my, I prefer to paint with, Procreate, is significantly cheaper than Adobe Photoshop. Um, so that's a win. And then second, I really prefer the, the tactile feedback of the kind of pencil right on the surface. It just feels more natural and artistic and what people are used to. A tablet is a little bit disconnected. Anyhow, Today, I'm going to show you a demo of how I do simple color studies using the iPad. I went around the house and I found some items. I have this cool little Grogu that was made by my friend Kelly. This is super cute and awesome. And I found this little reflective shiny bottle as well. And I thought I'm going to merge these two together to talk about a couple concepts um, that will help when you're painting. So I've got all kinds of different pictures of Grogu in the bottle in different lighting setups to see what would look the best. What do I want to paint? Is it backlit, frontlit, inside, outside, with the sun, in the shadow, on the table? Just to see, to take these around. This is a great idea. Take one object and go find different lighting for it. You could even paint it multiple different ways. I have chosen this image as the one that I think has the nicest lighting to talk about today. Today I'm also going to cover a couple of extra topics. I'm going to talk about being able to see through texture being able to see through highlights, splitting things out into mental layers so that you can paint one step at a time. The Grogu, I think, is a good example of, it has a good shape, it has good surface, it has good colors, it reacts to light very well, but there is this very intricate pattern all over his body. So we're gonna have to like ignore that for the time being, see the bigger shape, and then add the texture in when we're near the finish. The other thing I wanted to talk about with the, the glass bottle is being able to see reflections and bloom and highlights as a separate thing and be able to paint in layers, split your mind into layers, even though from a technical standpoint, we're only painting on one layer. In your mind, I think being able to split this out and see this as different parts, as its components, makes it easier to paint. So let's get to it. I'm opening up Procreate and I've made a new document, a uh, slide from the bottom here, and I'm going to open up slide this over here, photos. So I already have that image loaded into photos and now I can make this document kind of similar in size so that I'm painting about the same proportions and start my drawing. All right, so the couple tools that I particularly like in Procreate. I like this turpentine brush. This is my favorite painting brush. I also really like the pencil. I'm going to make a new layer just for a sketch here and on the pencil brush, just to kind of plan out where my little Grogu and where the bottle will be in comparison. So this just gives me a guide of the shape of the body and the ears and about the proportions. So I don't have to worry about this later, just in general to get this idea of where, where this body will be. That's good enough. I'm gonna go back to my layer one and I'm gonna, again, Look for the one color that could be this whole image. I'm just gonna do this kind of desaturated here. And there's this beautiful thing where I can kind of click and drag, fill the whole image with a color. I'm gonna go back to my turpentine brush and start painting in big color. I'm gonna make this brush size really big, opacity all the way up. Don't get lost in the, the, the little textures. Let's look for the main colors. So, I see a really strong blue in here. I'm going to just paint in some really strong blue. See this is darker here. Then there is a very dark kind of black type color here. I'm gonna look for the green of Grogu's head, which to me is a very desaturated Then there's the brownish red of his clothing. Not paying attention to texture, I'm just looking at the main colors and trying to block this in. Then I've got the grayish tool 
background. There and this super bright color. I'm trying to get all the main colors in here as quickly as I can. And the background is kind of like this grayish tone. I can also click, hold, and select, and it will give me that's my local color picker. All right, next colors that I see, I'm gonna kind of blur my eyes and go, what do I actually see in here? I see the dark of his eyes. Let's brush a little smaller. I see a very bright, warm colored rim light. Notice I'm not paying attention to the texture of his skin quite yet. I'm just kind of looking for the main tones, painting those in first, finding the shapes. This is actually kind of like sculpting, really. Sculpting, you take a block of clay and you slowly smush it down and then work details. You don't start with a block of clay and put in the little wrinkles in a face. You start with, where's the shape of the head? Okay, now where are the eyes and where are the nose? You start to form it out. and painting like this is more like sculpting, I think, than like drawing. You're not looking for lines, you're looking for big shapes, big patterns, and trying to kind of like sculpt this out. Do I have the right shape of his ear? Like this ear probably comes down a little bit lower. I wanna get the tones right. And this shadow down in here, kind of into this fold, where the eyes are. It's a sculpting kind of process. Try to work on the whole image as well. What's interesting is what's happening with the light here. He's backlit. There's the cool of the sky that's coming from on top down onto his body. That's lighting the top of his head. There's like a, a cooler tone up here on top of the head. So I can like just pull this a little bit towards the cools. This color, make more contact shadow, blur this off. Okay, so just like in Photoshop, we have the main brush and I like the turpentine brush in here. And then we also here, we have a blender. So this blender, I like to use Little Pine, I think is what I used to using as a blender. And it works the same as in Photoshop. Kind of blend some of these colors together and make this nice and big. and. Just gonna smush out some of these colors so that I'm finding the background. I'm gonna go into this layer here and unhide, or I'm going to hide my, my sketch. And now it's just pure color. Now that I've kind of got this blocked out, I can blend some of these colors around. Continue to find these shapes. I'm kind of sculpting with light. I'm looking at this as if he is one big blob and doesn't have any type of knitting texture. I'm just trying to find the big shapes here. There's a little pink in the ears, so I'm going to come in and try to find this general pink tone. Noticing too that this this eye is not in the right place. Sculpting as I go, trying to find what I'm seeing.
All right, for glass and metal and reflective objects, one of the tricks I want to talk about too, separating this out. Notice I'm not painting all the little highlights. I'm focusing in on the main colors here before I get to those highlights. Try and find all the variation of these blues. There's some really rich, beautiful blues in here. Staying very loose and just trying to mimic what I see. Once I've found some colors, going back and reselecting those colors, so they're easier to find once I've once I've found them. Now for the darks of the bottle, some really dark spots. Trying to find those dark spots. Now the background here has some cooler tones. All right, we're getting uh, getting pretty close here. The next thing I'm going to paint in is little tiny reflections. actually kind of warm. I'm going to show a trick. Over here in this part of the image there are little tiny highlights that are actually warm colors. So I'm going to try just desaturating the blue to try to find these tones. No, I think they actually do need to be a little bit warm. So I'm going to pull towards green. Now they'll just be a very desaturated kind of warmish tone. Yeah, that feels about right. The next trick I want to show is bloom. And so this is something I do in Photoshop all the time. It's one thing where I break my two or my single layer rule. And here I go, I make a new layer. I'm going to make this layer where it only lightens. It's going to add a glow effect. So I go here, this little N, and in normal mode just paints 
color as it is, but I wanted to paint in add mode. What add mode does is it only adds light. It doesn't add darkness. So it won't darken the backgrounds. It will only bring up the light. So when I paint with this, it's only going to brighten in the layers. And I super saturate sometimes color into this. I use a really dark saturated color and then very lightly brush on at a low opacity. And what it does is it just kind of adds a glow, a soft effect. If I want to add bounce light or if I want to add blooms and highlights, this is a very common technique that I use. It's a very powerful tool. And it's the one area where I break my single layer kind of workflow. Once I have that layer, I often merge that back together into the original layer and kind of continue painting so that I can keep it simple. But that's one trick that you'll see that I do when painting on the iPad and recording movies over and over. All right, so there you have it. That's my process for painting in the iPad. Very similar to Photoshop. Some extra little tips and tricks with new layers and add modes with kind of being able to see texture and unsee texture and re-add it in loosely later. I hope this is helpful and inspiring and I'll see you next time.